so I guess to sum things up a little bit, I uh, grew up Episcopalian, and my uh, mom converted to Catholicism when I was about 10 years old, and dragged me along with her, and, uh, <laughs> and she persevered through all of the garbage that I dished out to her. And uh, <clears throat> one of the foundational things for me, I think, early on, was she brought me to a number of different charismatic healing masses where a priest after mass would pray over people. And uh, many of those people would end up resting in the spirit. If you've never heard of that, sometimes when people have a powerful experience of God's presence, you know, they might fall back and lie down on the floor or whatever. You know, and we can believe what we want about that, whether it's whatever. The point being, in those experiences that I had, it was the most profound, like, life-changing thing I had ever experienced up until that point. Like, I got the first time that happened to me, I was prayed over by this priest. I knew from that moment forward, absolutely, that God existed, and that there was more to this life than what I could see. And from that moment, I've never, ever once questioned that, ever, no matter how bad or difficult stuff has ever gotten. So, praise God, some degree of faith was, was given to me in that moment. I mean, of course, through my mom's example and everything that she was trying to do for me, but uh, through the teenage years and rebelling against my parents and everything, just not wanting to listen to what they had to say about things, even though I knew that they were right a lot of the time. Uh, you know, I was very much caught up in all the stuff with my friends, actively trying to find the perfect girlfriend coming up empty each time, experiencing this lack of fulfillment, this lack of joy, you know, going and having exactly what I thought was going to make me happy time and time and time again, and always coming up empty over and over again, having this depression that was just growing in my life to the point where <clears throat> in college, even though I was active in the church, I was going to mass, you know, even sometimes daily masses, I was leading the Bible study group, I was playing in the chapel for the choir, I was doing prison ministry, I was helping lead retreats, I was, what else, this is nuts, like, I spread myself so thin doing all this amazing stuff, like, I'm on the surface, I look like a Catholic superstar, interiorly, I never prayed once in my dorm room, ever, for example. Like, I was so overwhelmed with this anxiety of trying to find something in my life that was missing, but I didn't know what it was. And I believed in God, but I didn't know what that had to do with me ever being happy. Like, I knew God existed, and He loves everybody, it's great. <clears throat> but like, what about me and my desires, my needs, what I want? And like, especially during college, what I wanted was to be in a relationship with this particular girl who I had fallen in love with, and we were best friends all through college. Um, and I thought we were going to be married after college. And it very quickly, well, not very quickly, eventually became clear that she was not on the same page with me at all. And so, although we remained best friends, it opened up this period of my life with just such profound, uh, I don't know if despair is too strong of a word, but maybe anger. Anger at God, anger at myself, um, anger at life, and uh, that landed me. <clears throat> I think God, God. What I want to say about all this stuff is just how profoundly God can bring good out of anything. Just how Father's saying God writes straight with crooked lines. I went into college thinking I was going to be a doctor. Then in those classes, I was. Anyways, that didn't work out. So I went <laughs> to <laughs> psychology in the psychology classroom. This is when all the stuff was going on with this girl, life's falling apart for me, and like, so I'm sitting in psychology classes, and they're talking about things, and I'm thinking over and over again, yeah, but why? What does this mean about life? Like, what is this? Why are we even here? Like, what's the point of anything? And so, of course, I ended up in the philosophy department, trying to, trying to like, wrestle my way towards figuring out the meaning of life, you know, as if I had to wrestle it out of God's hands and stuff, you know, because... At that point in my life, I felt I was not attracted to the Catholic Church. I was, a, like, like superficially as a Catholic rock star doing everything on campus you could possibly do, which was not a smart move. And yet, interiorly, <clears throat> I was like, I had no idea what it meant to be in a relationship with God at that time. Or that it was even possible, really, because I had basically given up on that, um, believing that... Yeah, basically that God had completely 
betrayed me by letting me believe so powerfully and confidently that his will for me was a particular path, and that path was just you know, shut down completely. So I felt betrayed and also angry at myself for having let that happen. Angry at myself for not being able to control my feelings. Angry at myself for feeling as bad as I did. Angry at myself for not being able to be grateful for all the blessings in my life. Um, you know, but then, so I'd reflect upon all the good things in my life, and I didn't care about any of it at all. Everything was empty and dark, and, you know, uh, so <clears throat> that went on for, for a while, and yet God, in so many ways for me, like these guys were saying, there were moments, there are moments like they're signposts sometimes, like there are these moments that God breaks through and maybe gives us little hints of things, and so there are a lot of moments for me along the way where in conversation with someone, for example, and they would mention the priesthood, I would get choked up. And like maybe even like my eyes would get a little tear and I'd squash it within like three seconds. And then I wouldn't think about it again for like maybe another six months or a year until that happened to me. And stuff like that would happen. And uh, I was always attracted to what priests did um, in helping people, but I always thought for one, you know, I definitely need to be willing to be happy, so that's priest is out of the question. And number two, I absolutely would hate to have to stand up, to stand for something in the midst of a church that's divided with so much confusion, disagreement, controversy, scandal, this, that, everything. What, I'm supposed to be someone to stand up and, like, stand for something that other people are going to disagree with? Like, what? Coming from a philosophy background in particular, I could sympathize with every perspective on any given issue, practically. I like being friends with everybody, I don't like conflict, I don't like having to disagree, whatever, and so I'm like, all right, well, I can't do that, so forget that. But then eventually, eventually, I think it was mainly, I mean, there's tons of different factors, but one I'll highlight, I mentioned to some of you, is the marrying consecration I was led to do. Um, a woman told me about it and gave me a little Louis de Montfort thing, and I went through that, and around that time, the year out of college, I, uh, all this stuff started falling into place, including me finally, for the first time, coming to embrace the Catholic Church that I had been like so actively participating in and doing everything for, but didn't really like embrace. And so it was like a total revelation to me that I could actually appreciate and learn from like what the folks had to say, what they had written in encyclicals, apostolic letters, what the traditional teachings of the church were. Because before then I was surrounded by nothing but just extremely liberal-minded people who wanted to figure out everything on their own according to what their preferences were to justify behaviors and lifestyles that they wanted to lead. These were the people who I was surrounded by completely. Great people with good intentions, but very confused. Um, and so that a lot of stuff just started falling into place and um, different retreats, different experiences with just really good friends. Um, just to fast forward a bit <clears throat> to um, God just slowly, slowly and gradually worked healing in my life to the point where finally a year out of college I was in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps. Um, one, because I like, of course, like we like helping people. Two, because I had no idea what else I was going to do. Three, it gave me a good job opportunity to do some cool stuff working with people in prison. But four, to buy some more time and hopefully find a potential wife, you know, who, you know, like, mm -hmm. you go to a Catholic, you know, volunteer program and find some good people, so. Okay. So, um, there you go. Uh, so I kept all the fishing lines out. I was in like Catholic dating sites and stuff like that. And this tension was just growing and growing and growing because I, I think it was, I was increasingly realizing that God was calling me to priesthood or religious life, but I was so afraid of that. So I was like trying to like throwing out all these fishing lines and like nothing was happening. Like, all right, here we go. And uh, so I started. God gave me a bit of an experience of joy in that too, though, like a recovered sense of purpose in life, like that there was something that I could still do and be that would be fulfilling and that I'd be able to help other people, that I'd be able to experience love, I'd be able to love and receive love. Um, and then, so just to fast forward, then just visiting, like for these guys too, like they said joint, entering a seminary is a way to continue the discernment process, at the very least, same thing with me, entering a religious life as a way to continue the discernment process. You don't sign the dotted line the first day, right? So, 
as visiting, spending time with different diocesan priests, visiting different communities, hanging out with them. And ultimately, it's just a matter of where you feel at home, I think, you know? You, just, you can read all this stuff, learn about the things, and you just go and we pray for God to lead us. And for me, it's been a total mystery to me, like how I'm here, even. <laughs> it's like God just set me on a wave that just crashed on the shore, and I'm happy for it. I'm glad that it worked out that way. It could have so easily been otherwise. So I can be very grateful every day. For that, you know, but like these guys said too, it's not easy. It's a wonderful thing, um, but um, yeah. The, I guess the last thing I'd want to say, just on all this, is just taking a step back and looking at the big picture of life. One of the things that's really helpful for me is to the thought that at the end of your life, when you die and you go before the Lord and you look back on your life, at that moment, what would you have wanted to have done? That way of thinking about it can give you a bit more clarity because it suddenly frees you from all the like the things you can get caught up in, like all the things like, oh, I need this, I need this, I need that. No, you probably don't. Like I'm just caught up in all these ways of thinking based on my the world I've come through, and yet the world's so much bigger than what we know. Like the, the ways of living. Um, and so for me, I started thinking more about the salvation of the souls. What's at stake? If it's true that there's even one person out there in the world who might go to hell for all eternity, unless, like, maybe, may, or let me phrase it differently. If there's anything that I can do, anything at all in life, even if it takes an entire lifetime, that could prevent or help one soul make it to heaven who otherwise wouldn't, it's completely worth it. It's infinitely worth it. Infinitely worth it. You know, that's like, that's not me being like heroic and compassionate, that's just like rational. It makes perfect sense to think that way. And so in my best moments when I appreciate that, I'm like, okay, yeah, good, okay, okay. And then that frees me up to be a bit more trusting of God. So I'm like, okay, I want to be about this mission. I don't know how. And you certainly don't have to be a priest or a religious to do that. But it just helps to make ourselves available to that, saying like, God, whatever you want from me. I want that because that's going to be where I'm going to help the most people and hopefully grow and become a better person. So for me, I was attracted to the Franciscans because it kicked me out of my comfort zone big time. Um, and uh, But also the support of the community, which is essential in any walk of life. Like I like how these guys mentioned there are different ways of finding that the brothers in the seminary fellow priests, even the people you serve, you know, the, the relationships are everything, because um, we can't do it alone, I've learned that more and more as the years go by, I'm very humbled by realizing more and more of my weakness every year, and it's a good thing, it's a good thing, because then it makes us be more real with each other, and not being afraid to say, like, I love how you mentioned that thing, like, at the end of the day, being able to say, like, I had a hell of a day, or whatever, and just be, that's so good. To be able to be real with each other. Like, if you all can do that, too, with yourselves, with your friends, with your family, like, be real with each other. What a gift. Because, like, I lived on such a superficial thing with my parents, man, for way too long. Way too long. So, that's it.